Welcome to the topic, Understanding Depression and Anxiety in Later Life. This is Sean Brotherson, Family Life Specialist with NDSU Extension. I am also joined on this topic by Jane Stroman, Extension Aging Specialist. Thank you for your interest in this topic and how it might be of relevance in your life and work. This is video number two in a series of short educational videos on the topic of understanding depression in later life. In this short video, we are exploring the topic of depression and anxiety in later life. Depression is an important condition to understand because it affects a significant number of people and can have severe consequences. Research indicates that depression is quite common in later life, affecting over 5 million Americans ages 65 and older each year. In any given year, between 8% and 15% of older adults living in the community report at least one episode of major depression, with up to one out of four individuals experiencing significant depressive symptoms. Depression is not a natural part of aging. However, if it is left unaddressed, depression may result in serious challenges, including difficulties in physical, mental, or social functioning, decreased quality of life, and delayed recovery from illness or other health conditions. Anxiety is a re related mental health condition that often accompanies depression, and so both of these conditions may occur together in an older individual. An accurate understanding of depression and anxiety can assist a person to recognize these conditions and the importance of managing them well. Let's explore some of what we know about depression and anxiety in later life, and then share information on how to get help if it is needed. There are many factors that may raise the risk of depression for aging community members, such as living alone, having no relatives or friends nearby, or experiencing recent losses. Being aware of these risk factors can enable greater awareness of this condition. So what is depression? Depression is a mental health condition characterized by an inability to concentrate, insomnia, loss of appetite, physical tiredness or fatigue, feelings of extreme sadness, guilt, hopelessness, and helplessness, and thoughts of despair, discouragement, and death. It's also called clinical depression. Almost 4% of people age 55 and over living independently in the community suffer from major depression in any given year. Depression usually is marked by a variety of symptoms occurring together during a period of more than two weeks. Occasional episodes of fatigue, discouragement, or anxiety are common for all individuals. However, when a wider array of symptoms develops and lasts longer than two weeks, then clinical depression may occur. Some individuals may experience symptoms that are substantial risk factors for depression, such as social isolation, personal history, including chronic medical illness or prior depressive episodes, and family history of mental health issues or alcohol abuse. It's important to assess a person's experiences to consider the risk for depression in his or her life. Among older adults, challenges with anxiety often occur at the same time as depression. Research on this topic indicates that 26% of people with anxiety also experience depression. But in addition, about 48% of people with depression also experience anxiety. Thus, Depression often is accompanied by anxiety as a kind of traveling partner when it occurs in older adults. Anxiety is a common mental health condition that often accompanies depression. The experience of anxiety is typically marked by intense mental worry or confusion that becomes debilitating. If a person experiences anxiety that is intense or frequently present, carrying out basic tasks or functioning in a social setting can become difficult. About one out of 10 individuals over the age of 55 undergoes the experience of dealing with an anxiety condition in any given year. So what are some symptoms to be aware of? Symptoms of anxiety often include mental and physical signals. For example, 
The mental symptoms of anxiety can include a high sense of worry or fear, a feeling of being paralyzed, or a sense of panic. Anxiety is also often indicated by a variety of physical signs. First of all, this can include fatigue, disturbed sleep, or feeling jittery. Other physical signs in your muscles or head can include tight or sore muscles, feeling dizzy or lightheaded, or having an upset stomach. Some additional signs include a shortness of breath, increased heart rate, dry mouth, or sweating. If you or another person is experiencing anxiety, focus on strategies to calm down and feel more in control, such as getting to a familiar setting, sitting down and breathing regularly, or other strategies. As with depression, a variety of risk factors contribute to the possibility of experiencing anxiety. If a person has a personal history of previous encounters with depression or anxiety, a chronic illness, a history of substance abuse, or a tendency towards social isolation, these are personal factors that increase the likelihood of anxiety as an older adult. Other risk factors include a family history of alcohol abuse, or family members who have experienced anxiety or mood difficulties. Women are more likely than men to deal with anxiety in their later years, and exposure to a traumatic event can also increase the risk of anxiety. An awareness of risk factors for anxiety can help individuals be more sensitive to what they or others might be experiencing. Let's sum up a few key points about depression and anxiety in later life. Depression is an important condition to understand because it affects a significant number of people and it can have severe consequences. For example, it can disturb a person's thoughts and feelings, alter a person's behavior, and cause physical difficulty and emotional distress. In addition, anxiety is a condition involving intense worry or confusion that can also be very challenging and can occur along with the experience of depression. However, both depression and anxiety can be treated effectively when diagnosed and managed with care. It is everyone's responsibility to understand depression and anxiety and help individuals to find effective solutions. A critical question is where can I get help? If you think you or someone you care about might be experiencing depression, you may want to visit your doctor first to determine if this is a problem for you. If so, your doctor may find a medication to help you or could refer you to counseling. In North Dakota, you can call 211 for confidential listening and support, as well as information and referral. This concludes video number two in the series, Understanding Depression in Later Life. Thank you for viewing this resource. We encourage you to seek out further understanding on key issues related to depression, anxiety, grief, suicide, and helping resources in later life by viewing the other short educational videos in this series. These and other educational resources can be accessed on the NDSU Extension YouTube channel or at the web link on your screen. This educational resource has been brought to you by NDSU Extension, extending knowledge, changing lives.